All right, what's going on guys? Quickly before we start this video, I want to let you guys know about my transformation challenge that's going on right now. It's an attempt for myself to get back in shape, honestly, but I run a few of these every year and you guys seem to love it, so we're pushing more and more of them. This one's gonna be the lowest barrier to entry we've ever done. It's gonna be run through my app, which has a nutrition tracker and multiple programs you can follow along. It's gonna be a six week transformation challenge. And you guys are gonna have the opportunity to either put on a bunch of muscle, lose a bunch of fat, whatever your goals are, it doesn't matter. I'm trying to kind of lean bulk, you could say, get back in shape, lose a little bit of body fat while also putting on a little bit of muscle. You guys can do whatever you want. It's best transformation wins. And the winner of that is gonna get $6,000. Second place is gonna get $2,500. And then we're also having a second category this time around where that winner gets $2,500. And that's for the best fat loss transformation. So that's mainly focused on people who are trying to burn as much fat as possible, or the other category is just a great transformation overall. So if you guys wanna check it out, tboomfitness.com. Tboom Fitness Instagram has all the details on the last post as well if you need to check that out but I'm going to put the link down below. If you guys want to check it out, please be sure to do that. And this also signs you up for my app. So it's only $35 to enter the challenge, plus the fee for the monthly fee for the app, which is super affordable. So appreciate you guys. Be sure to check it out. You get jacked, shredded, whatever your goals are. And hopefully you guys like the video. Absolutely, keep at it. Keep at it. If you ever go down that realm, so, Matt, nice to meet you. Hit me up. I'm a phone call away. Appreciate it. Anything. Thank you, okay, thanks, guys. Appreciate you. <sighs> what is up, YouTube? Here in my garage, aka my gym, just moping around because I'm not allowed to work out. So, Trying to still do some content for you guys while I'm not allowed to train right now. I'm on like week three. I'm just about to hit week three of four weeks of no training. So it's close, but then it's gonna be Christmas. We're gonna be gone for a while. So I'm gonna be doing a Q&A, grocery haul this week, little stuff like that, just to get back into it. And I'm doing it in my gym because this is the only excuse I have to be here and I miss being here. So with that being said, Q&A. First question. A lot of, I was getting a lot of questions about my kids. I picked a few, but maybe I'll do my kids. They're not twins, I promise. My baby coming soon, but I'm gonna probably do a Q&A, maybe something with Courtney, more focus on that. So I'll just answer a few. And I mean, probably still not getting an answer them fully, but what do you want to name your child? Now, I don't, I don't wanna give this away either because it's probably gonna give away the sex and I don't know if we will have announced it by the time this up, but I did want to, <laughs> I had a funny idea. I told Courtney I wanted to name our daughter something that's just like very old, like only an old person would have, like, Bob or Gladys or Cleopatra or something random like that and then make that their middle name or something so if ever their friends were like, what's your middle name? And they're like, oh, my middle name is fucking Cleopatra. They'll be like, why the fuck is that your middle name? And like our kid can roll their eyes and be like, oh my God, my dad's an idiot and he thought it would be funny to give me a stupid middle name. And I just thought it would make a really cool story every time someone asked their middle name. So still working on Courtney. She's not happy with it. And so far she's saying absolutely no, but we'll see. I got a few more months to convince her. Who is your inspiration? I've answered this before and still always been my dad. My dad's just been the number one person I looked up to my whole life. There's never anyone like on the loose person who I didn't know or had a concept made up of my mind of who they were that I really looked up to. My dad was just always like calm, cool, collected. I felt like he knew everything. I felt like he was the strongest guy in the world when I was younger. And he just like led the family and was exactly what we needed as best as he could be. So I was super grateful for him and I always looked up to just the way he handled himself as a, a father and a husband. And I mean, recently there's been more people who have come into my life and as I've gotten to know them, they've become an inspiration, but they weren't other than that. It's hard for me to be inspired by someone I don't know. I don't know if I just have trust issues with people on the internet or something, but you know, people like Ian, has been an inspiration for me in the bodybuilding career. Obviously he got me into it and like that. People like Dom have been a huge inspiration to me for business. 
business. Courtney has been a huge inspiration for me, just wholehearted, kind-hearted living. She's the best at that. So there's been people who have come in my life and inspired me in different ways. But growing up, I guess, was my dad. What do you think is the ultimate form of self-improvement? I'm not even really sure what you mean by form, but what the answer that pops into my head is humility. And that's just for the, the ability to always hear criticism, to understand you can be better, to be the student rather than the teacher, to listen, and just that concept that you can always be better. To me, that's just constant self-improvement, not thinking you're better than anyone, not think you're entitled to anything. Entitlement, all that kind of shit that I think a lot of people have these days, you know, not wanting to work for something. I feel like all that comes back to that lack of humility. The more humble you are, the more you're willing to work for something, the more you're willing to learn. And I just think that's one of the, the best traits to have to continue any form of improvement, especially self-improvement. The most important aspect you love about bodybuilding? <sighs> the tough question. I would say a common, what comes into my mind first is like the challenge that it puts on me. The p challenge to like continuously keep getting better, find new ways to keep getting better, find new ways to stay motivated, find new ways to be more consistent and just like that goal to keep pushing something better and better. And it's this like physical goal that I can chase that makes me internally, mentally a better person as well. And it's this physical goal where as I keep chasing and keep pushing and keep getting more Olympias, put on more muscle, build a better physique, all this stuff, it comes with all these mental challenges that force me into situations that are very difficult. And I think putting yourself into difficult situations are like the number one thing to make you stronger, make you better at every aspect in life. And life is gonna put, life will eventually put you in a difficult position. So the more difficult positions you put yourself in, the more you'll be prepared for the shit that life will throw at you. I also, what when I think of this now, this is more so, I guess, I don't know, it's still bodybuilding, but when I hear, when I go to like the Olympias, meet and greets and stuff like that, or I read my DMs or comments and I, I hear people talk about the inspiration and that I give them, I guess, from the way I carry myself or what I'm doing in my career, what I've accomplished and stuff like that, that really motivates me as well and something that I like really just love. It makes me want to just keep being better and doing better because I know other people are seeing me doing that and want to be better for themselves too. Which anime are you watching right now? So I just finished Jujutsu Kaisen. Great show. Axel told me to get on that one. It's only a few seasons. I got through it pretty quick. And then I started watching Demon Slayer. And I know that's a super popular one. Just getting into it now and I fucking love it. Huge fan. I feel like this is a pretty deep one too. You know, it's pretty dark. It's fucking, I'm not gonna ruin it. It's like the first episode, but his family gets just brutally murdered. <laughs> and the very beginning, super sad. And what I love about all these anime shows is all the, the main heroes just have this like pure heart. They're just like such like good people. And it, it, it shows you all these ways where to gain power, you could like go to the dark side and be bad and do bad things and treat people poorly to try and like selfishly gain more power. But when you stick true to like your moral compass and being a good, just kind soul, it might be a slower route and a harder route, but it ultimately takes you further. And I think it's just a cool lesson that's in all anime and certainly in Demon Slayer too, but I'm really liking it so far. <clears throat> real Christmas tree or fake one? I was actually just talking to Courtney about this because she wanted to get a real one and I was like, I'm a little busy and a little bit lazy right now to be setting up a real tree, cutting it, cleaning it, all the shit that comes out with it when you have to throw down this pine needle all over your house. So my compromise was we have a fake tree already. We'll keep using that. And when our kids are old enough to even know what Christmas is and what a tree is, we'll go with them to a tree farm, cut it down ourselves and start making that a tradition. But we'll start that tradition once our kids are conscious enough to even appreciate it. So right now, fake tree, soon to be real tree. What's the thing that makes you so confident every time? How? A lot of these questions are worded very weird, but that's a good question because I'm not always confident. I definitely haven't always been confident and I've had to earn the confidence that I do have. Like the first, I don't know, three Olympias and 10 shows before that. Whenever I got on stage, I was like super nervous, didn't feel confident in myself, didn't really like believe I was going to like win the Olympia. And it honestly really wasn't until the last two Olympias where like in my mind, I was like, I'm gonna win this Olympia. Like this is mine, no one's gonna beat me. And it took me four titles to really feel like that. And this year was the most, this year was the first time I ever said it aloud. You would never catch me saying it loud, I'm gonna win this Olympia or I think I'm gonna win this Olympia. I was like, nope, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna show you. I'm not gonna put anything out there. And it was probably a lack of confidence in myself. But this year I was like, fuck that. You know, I know what I can do. I know what I'm capable of. I know how I look right now. And I was like, I'm gonna win this thing. And I think the only reason I was able to get that confidence is because I built it over time. I've been doing, I've been bodybuilding for 10 years, stepping on stage for the Olympia seven times. And after enough repetitions, enough proof, you can't deny to yourself just 
how capable I really am now. So it's just kind of disproving any self-doubt in myself and putting myself out there into those situations where I don't feel confident and proving to myself over and over again what I'm capable of. And same with public speaking. I've talked about this before, but I've been super nervous and anxious to public speaking my whole life. And the more and more I started to do it, the more and more I just started to build confidence in it. And the coolest thing I found, I touched on this, but when I built more confidence in public speaking, I built more confidence everywhere in my life. And it just, I could feel it translate. Even the smallest, stupidest things that I've, I've touched on, I have, I used to have like more social anxiety, like thinking people were looking at me, judging me, like, and I just hated being around a lot of people. And when I got my hair transplant done and I came back, I had scabs and like dry skin falling all over and looked super fucking weird. My head was like swollen from the water they have to inject in you. And we're going to the grocery store and Courtney's like, do you want to come in or do you want to just stay in the car because you don't want people to see your head? And I was like, fuck it. You know what? I'm just going to go in the grocery store and I'm not going to be able to fuck what people think about. They're looking at my head thinking I look weird. Like, who the fuck cares? No one's even going to look at me. And I noticed like getting past that fucks given, I guess you could say, in the grocery store, I like, I felt a subtle air of confidence even more so than I normally have. I was just walking around. I was just like, I don't give a fuck. And it felt good. So I think just putting yourself into situations where you don't feel confident and showing yourself that you can feel confident and you can be more than you think you're capable of really just stacks belief into yourself over and over again. The more you do it, the more confident you'll be. What's your favorite Christmas? Christmas, Christmas, wow. The list is coming in strong. What's your favorite Christmas themed cheat food or meal? Um, I mean, kind of a cheat answer just to say Christmas dinner. I always have like a Thanksgiving dinner on Christmas. We have it twice a year Thanksgiving and on Christmas, like turkey stuffing, Thanksgiving, all that. But just because that's not really fair, I would say these sugar cookies. My mom always made these sugar cookies. I think they're called, or shortbread. Wow, I don't even know what the fuck they are. I think they're shortbread. And they like put a little dab on a blob on a cookie sheet and then she puts a fork two different ways and it makes a little crisscross pattern on them. And they're really like, they like fall, melt in your mouth like butter, super sweet, super good. The white little cookies are fire. And I think it's just so more so the nostalgia and the memory that my mom's make, making those every Christmas since before I can remember. What is your dream car? It's a tough question because there's a few. If they make a 992 GT2 RS, I want that really bad. They haven't made a new GT2 RS, so I would love a GT3 RS. I wish they made it in manual because badass with the fat wing and everything but the GT3 manual is pretty fire too. So I've been a huge fan of Porsches ever since getting one and driving them. They're just like, they just drive like crazy. Dom has an 812 super fast Ferrari, which I never like loved Ferraris for any reason. But when I sat in that thing, I fell in love with that. The thing is crazy, a V12 and it's comfortable. The seats are big and I fit in it. That's a huge bonus for me. A lot of cars I don't fit in. Other than that, also the old school cars, 69 Mustang. I have a 69 Camaro, so that used to be one but uh, then a 70 charger as well with a Helifant motor. I want like a fucking thousand horsepower charger one day. So I'm gonna have to get a barn one day when I'm older and Courtney will not be a fan of that. I start filling it up with all these cars, but she'll, 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 she'll come, she'll come through. What's the most influential change you made that's promoted the most growth? <laughs> Funny, the first thing that pumps my mind reading that is stopping drinking. And it was more so just a complete lifestyle shift that I made at some point in my life where I used to like, party and go out and eat bad and X, Y, and Z. And then all of a sudden I switched to just being full bodybuilder mode. And the biggest thing I really cut it with drinking and I used to drink quite a bit. I used to drink two or three times a week when I was in college. And while I still was able to make gains and progress, obviously drinking, you're not eating that whole night. You're clogging up your liver. So your ability to burn fat through your liver is slowing down. You're hung over the next day or the next two days, depending how much you drink. Your workouts are suffering, your recovery is suffering, everything's just off. You're eating shitty because you don't feel like eating chicken and rice or egg whites in the morning when you're hung over. Everything is just off. So when I stop drinking completely, and then maybe now I might get like a tipsy once a year or have like two or three drinks every now and then, like tw once or twice a year I'll drink, but I really never drink anymore. And that really shifted my whole mindset and just being all in on bodybuilding. And I made so much progress that year. That was realistically, that was going into the 2019 when I won the Olympia, so definitely that. How can we get a girlfriend like Courtney King? <laughs> Actually was thinking about this the other day when someone was asking me about like how to get a girl and blah, blah, blah. How to, people like comment joking, how to find the Courtney King. 
because she's the best, obviously. Everyone wants a girlfriend like her, wife, and fiance. But um, the interesting thing when I was thinking about it is the simple fact of what you put out is what you attract. And if you're like trying to be cool, trying to be cocky, trying to be arrogant, trying to be this like tough guy, macho, blah, blah, blah you're gonna attract a, a girl who's, and if that's fake, you're gonna be attracting a girl who is also fake and looking for something fake. But if you're being like your true self, you're gonna attract the girl who matches with your true self. So when 2018, when we first met, the reason she reached out to me, she actually slid in my DMs, believe it or not. But it was because that was the year I got really sick going into the Olympia. And after the Olympia, I'd made a YouTube video talking about what I had gone through. And I remember getting emotional and I cried. And I remember being like, oh, I should delete this video. I wanna fucking cry on YouTube, like fuck this. And I was like, you know what? No, this is, this is raw, this is real. This is just me being honest about how I felt and how fucking kind of depressed I had felt at the time. And I put it out there and I was crying and I was emotional, I was super vulnerable. And she somehow saw that video. I, don't, I think it was because we were both with Gymshark and it just kind of popped up and she saw it and she's like fuck this guy's different like i can just tell he's got a great physique he's good looking but he's different there's something about him like who puts this kind of vulnerable shit on youtube as a bodybuilder and it made her interested so she slid in my dms and i always had a crush on her because she was hot and she was miss bikini olympian 2016 so i was excited that she was in my dm but that was the only thing that really grabbed her attention rather than just trying to be some like cool instagram fuck boy online otherwise i would have attracted Instagram fuck girls. So I say, be yourself, put your true self out there and understand what you're gonna put out there is what you're gonna attract. Little lesson from Seabum. This bastard's trying to lure me in here with a, a lisp sentence. So I will enlighten you. I'm gonna try and read this. If seven slippery salamanders slithered sideways super silently, would you surrender? <laughs> Wow, I feel like I, feel I should read that 10 times every night before going to bed and I'll be better at talking. <laughs> if you were little, what would you ask for for Christmas? Damn, that's tough. There's a lot of cool shit out there right now. I really like stuff that flew when I was younger for some reason and I don't anymore. So maybe a drone. I feel like that'd be really cool. And even when I was young, I always fucking wanted one of those little cars that drove, like the little kid cars that you could get in and drive around. You know, they were super slow. I just really always wanted one of those and I never got one. So now they have the like, crazy Tesla ATVs that actually go really fast. So I would probably say a drone or a little ATV thing that ripped around. Are you going to do a six week challenge? Yes. So last year we did a eight week challenge and we're building it out right now. I'm still not entirely sure if I want to do a six week or eight week. I kind of like the idea of like a six week sprint starting in the new year and something that I need to do as well. That's why I kind of want to do it. Cause I'll be doing it alongside you guys. Same thing as before, just small entry fee, sign up for the app, all the workouts and progress and everything will be run through there. And then I'm going to be doing it too, because that's when I can finally start working out again. And then we'll have a, a few prizes, some cash money, some free supplements, some free bum energy, a bunch of cool shit. So I'll have some more information coming on that soon, but stay tuned for that challenge. What's something you learned attending All Saints Catholic High School? <laughs> this is a friend of mine from high school answering, asking this question. And because it's a friend of mine asking this question, one of the best things I learned from high school was the importance of like brotherhood and friendship. We had a great group of guy friends in high school and some friends that I still talk to today. They all came down earlier this year, actually in like January, a bunch of them came down and we went partying in Miami, still hung out. Every time we go home, we still hang out and talk. And I just really appreciated having like just bro friends, just like to be able to fuck around, laugh and joke around about. There's not many things in life you need more than that. It's something I've realized in all stages of my life, whether in high school, in college, parts when I was broke, parts when I've had money, I've been successful when I'm not. Just hanging out with friends in the fucking basement, playing video games or chilling or drinking or whatever, is just always a great time and always lifts the spirits. So very important, keep your friends close. What are some things you've learned from bodybuilding that you will use in fatherhood? Damn, that's a tough one. There's a lot of things on there. Um, something I was just thinking about, kind of a bodybuilding, kind of not thinking about as a parent, something I want to teach my kid, is to just always ask questions and don't ask one word questions, like ask inquisitive questions. Always be the student, like I was talking earlier, humility. I guess humility is the overarching thing of that, but always being willing to ask questions. Like, you know, I win Olympias now, but I go around and I train people and I'm like, you lead the workout, why are you doing that? Like, if someone, I'm like, they're like, oh, I don't want to overstep and tell, I'm like, please give me advice, asking questions, like always. I like training with people like Vernon with the GBRS guys, he's a, a strength training coach. He's more knowledgeable than me. So I'm asking him questions. How can I help my hips? How can I do this? And he's like teaching me all these things. Training with hypertrophy coach. And I'm asking him all these tips, trips and questions. And I mean, I'm always willing to learn and I want to make sure my child is always humble and willing to learn. I would also say a huge thing is just the importance of effort 
before the result. So just knowing that if you are ever going to complain about a result, don't, <laughs> don't claim about the result. But if you have any remorse about a result, you better damn well have worked your ass off and as hard as you possibly could. And if not, go back and work harder and then expect hopefully a better result. So I feel like I worded that very poorly. I'm gonna have to write this shit down to teach it to my kids better. But just in essence, focusing more on the effort rather than the result, because the things that out of our control in life are the result, but you can always control how hard you work and being better and better every single day. Sorry if it's inappropriate, but how did you make your wife pregnant in prep? <laughs> I don't want to answer that question, so go ask your father, because he obviously knows because he's your father. I'm not telling you guys that shit on YouTube. <laughs> Best way to main maintain discipline and mentality? <sighs> the loaded question. <sighs> Best way to maintain discipline? I would say structured routine is something that pops in my mind as very helpful. And this year, when I was really struggling at the part where I tore my lap and everything, and I just had to keep my discipline and just keep locked in, I was just like, okay, get in a monotonous routine, become a robot. Wake up at the same time every day, do your cardio at the same time every day. Breakfast, everything into a complete routine. So on those days where you really feel like you don't wanna do it, or you don't wanna fucking cardio, you don't wanna train, you don't wanna whatever, doesn't matter because it's just part of your routine. You become a robot and just do it without even thinking. You just run through the days and get, get through it as best as you possibly can. I think that really helps and honestly is a great trick for any aspect of mental health and anything you're trying to do. The more structured and routine you are, the better you feel mentally. Also, having a good support system is really fucking important and I will always preach that from the mountaintop. Treating people around you who are important properly so that they treat you properly and have your back in hard times is just like such a cheat code for discipline. You know, if you ever have times where you feel like weak or you doubt yourself and you look at someone you love who believes in you, fuck that, that, that lifts you up full of fucking and motivation and gets you ready to lock in and do whatever the fuck you want. So I think that's super important. And it's a discipline and mentality that relates to mentality too. You know, you look at, like I said, you look at someone who loves you, it lifts your spirits, keeps you on track. And there's few things more important than that. Cause like I was talking about brotherhood, relationships, everything that's like the most important thing in this life is enjoying it with people you love. And it's a cheat code to being successful. That's for damn sure. But yeah. I get to the point where I start reading through the questions and I've answered them all at some point in my life and it's hard for me to keep answering them. So I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. I don't know how long it's been. It's been at least 20 minutes. So I feel like this is a good enough video. Calvin will be like, go longer, but no. So thank you guys for watching. My back's broken sitting on the floor. I thought it'd be more comfortable here, but be back in the gym in a few weeks. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys. Six week challenge is coming soon. Hope you guys all have a Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah and whatever else you celebrate, enjoy.